Okay, uh, Dina Johnson is your project manager. Dina, passing it to you. Thank you, Sally. Good evening. Um, thank you for attending this uh, community design meeting for the Springs and Stedman Farms water and sewer improvements. We have an agenda. We're going to start with introduction, project overview, project area, frequently asked questions, and timeline. I'm Dina Johnson, project manager. My telephone number is 817-392-7866. Email address is dina.johnson at fortworthtexas.gov. Engineering design consultant is RLG Consulting Engineers. Brent Lewis is the project manager, and he's attending this meeting with us tonight. This project is in Council District 10. Construction will impact customers in the villages of Woodland Springs Homeowner Association, the Stedman Farm Homeowner Association, and the North Fort Worth Alliance. Also, this project is bounded by Timberland Boulevard to the north, KT Road to the east, Sunset Circle to the south, and North Kayla Road to the west. This map in here, it shows you all the improvements for the water and sewer in this project. We will be replacing water and sewer in Oak Haven Road, also water and sewer in West Kayla Road, water line replacement in North Kayla Road, water and sewer replacement in Oak Leaf Trail, and water replacement in Katy Road. Question asked on what do we consider when we're creating such a project? Fort Worth prioritized water and sewer line improvement projects based on available data, which include water main break history, leak history, CCTV. This is where we install a camera inside the pipe to tell us the condition of the pipe, the inspection and edge of the line, line material, lead service lines, and cast iron lines. This improvement project is a result of the Cast Iron Initiative on Cape Road and Oak Haven Road. Those two streets have cast iron water lines and they will be replaced. These cast iron water lines are part of the Fort Worth Water Department's initiative to replace approximately 20 miles of cast iron pipe every year. Fort Worth Water also received petition from several residents requesting that the city extend the sewer services to their neighborhood. Who's eligible to connect to the city sewer line? In order to connect to the city sewer line, your property has to be platted. Under normal circumstances, circumstances your private service will gravity flow to the sewer main. However, in this situation, we have about five lots where the private service lines is lower than the city sewer main. That means we need to have about five grinder pumps that they'll need to be installed on, on those lots. We provided a connection checklist. First of all, we have, um, we request that the owner, the property owner will pay for the sewer impact fee also for the sewer tap fee, the homeowner identifies location of the sanitary sewer connections on their property. And the city will install the sewer mains and reconstruct the drive, the roadway also. Master plumbers obtain a plumbing permit. Master plumber extend the private sewer line to the city sewer mains. Master plumber coordinate with the city to inspect the connection to the city sewer mains, master plumber abandoned the septic tank. This chart also shows you the cost when you connect to the city of Fort Worth sewer. You have a plumbing permit. Currently, it's about $28 per permit. And also, you're going to hire a third-party plumber. That's a cost, additional cost. A private sewer lines to connect to the public sewer line. It's done by a private plumber. Abandoned septic tank, grinder pump, if applicable, 
and also a sewer impact fee. In this example, we have 5 8 inch of a meter, and it costs about $1,796. And this design phase of the project uh, we later on, we're going to have a construction public meeting, and we'll talk further about other issues pertaining to construction. The sewer impact fee also, I may mention, that might increase in 2024. What is a sewer impact fee? An impact fee is a charge to help offset the, the expense of a new or increased demand that will require additional capacity improvements on the existing Fort Worth sewer system. If any existing development presently utilizes a water well, septic tank, or individual waste disposal system, and the property owner requests to connect to the city's wastewater system, the customer will pay the current impact fee prior to connecting to the system. So this is has to come first. What is a tap fee? That's the second thing that it's an expense for the resident. A sewer tap fee is a service fee that is charged for installing the service line from the public sewer main to the property line. The sewer tap fee is based on the contractor bid price. When we go to construction, we're going to receive bid uh, price from the contractor, and whatever that bid price is, you will pay it to the city of Fort Worth. If you don't pay your sewer tap fee before construction ends, you will not be able to connect to the city main until construction is complete, and you have to wait two years till the expire of the warranty. The sewer clean out to provide the crew's easy access if a backup or blockage occurs. The sewer line from the clean out to the house is the owner's responsibility to maintain. It's important to know which side of this which side of the line is a private and which side of the line is is owned by the city. The city side of the line starts at the main in the street and goes to the customer's sewer clean out. The customer's side of the service line goes from the sewer clean out to the house and includes all the plumbing inside the house. Disconnecting the septic tanks, reconnecting to the Fort Worth public sewer main is the owner's responsibility of, to cover all the expense. I mentioned something about the grinder pump. A grinder pump works like an oversized household garbage disposal. Basically, it takes all the waste and it pumps it to the city of Fort Worth sewer. City of Fort Worth contractor will install the grinder pump, but the homeowner is responsible for maintaining the pump. This construction will be in the street. And if Fort Worth needs to access your property, we will contact you. During construction, we will assign an inspector to this project. The inspector and the contractor will work together, and they will assist all residents who need driveway access to during active construction hours. During construction, your water will not be turned off except for 15 to 30 minutes. This is happens when we transferred the service from the existing line to a temporary water line, and when service is transferred from the temporary to the new line. These switchovers normally happen during the day. The contractor will knock on the door and let customer know when the water will be turned off. As I mentioned before, this project currently in the design phase we will host another community construction meeting after we have a contractor on board. If you need further information, you can go to www.fortworthtexas.gov and type in the project number, which is 104020, in the search bar on the homepage. This will take you to the Woodland Springs and Stedman Farms Water and Sewer Improvements project page. To get the project page updates, scroll down to the bottom of the project page and click on subscribe to this page. The link 
to the project summary frequently asked questions will be linked to this project page. Also, more information for emergencies, you can dial 817-392-4477. This is 20 hours a day. This is when you have uh, water main breaks and you select option one. For non-emergency, you can call 817-392-4477 from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. You can also download the My FW app from the App Store or Google Play. You can report sewer overflows, leaks, and water main breaks, missing or broken meter lids, water theft, water violation, no water service, water pressure issues, and other sewer concerns. Again, I'm Dina Johnson. I'm the project manager. This is my telephone number, 817-392-7866. Email address dina.johnson at fortworthtexas.gov. Design engineer is RLG Consulting Engineer. Brent Lewis is the project manager. Thank you for attending this presentation, and now we can take questions. Let me double check. Um, we don't have any questions in chat, so if any of you have a question, go ahead. Well, the password's wrong. I can't get in. We were having trouble with WebEx. I had to use my email, so I'm not sure what happened. Um, do you have a question? Well, I kind of, well, I, I don't know if you guys were using um, PowerPoint or what. I mean, I'd like to know um, how do I get information on what it's going to cost the, the customer on the sewer line. I didn't see that. I mean, you guys were talking about it, but I mean, what's the, what's the, what's it going to total cost the the homeowner? We we have city staff attending this meeting, who basically involved in this situation. Christina, are you with us? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm here. Um, and w what is your address, sir? Are you on? Um... Okay, then. Okay, then. Oh, okay. Um, I can tell you what your impact fees are going to be on your uh, for the sewer impact. However, you know, the tap costs, the sewer tap costs are, we, we currently don't have those um, at this time. And, um, but I can definitely let you know that for your property, your sewer impact fee, because your property was platted in the 70s, you're looking at $161 just on the impact fees, just on the sewer okay. impact fee. Then you're going to be expecting that sewer tap cost once we get that information in. And then um, you're, we did go over like some of the, the other um, items that you would have to do with your with hiring a plumber and those costs we can't we don't have that information on you have to get some information with your plumber right i understand that and then then will you have a monthly fee yes there's a monthly fee you you should have a your water bill now so that'll be an additional charge that's added on to your monthly um okay bill there. and so now is it going to be mandatory for the residents to hook up to the sewer? No, that will not be mandatory. You have options oh. not to sewer. But okay. you are one of the individuals that signed the petition, correct? To receive the... Uh, yeah, I was one of them. Service. Okay. So, but I mean, they said it was just, they just needed it signed so we can get a price. That's all. So they didn't say that, they didn't say I was had to hook up to it if I sign the piece of paper. You don't have to. Okay. So, so, okay. So basically, uh, we will know the hookup, all that stuff once the pipe gets in the ground. We should have that um, sewer tap cost before it gets into the ground. And I'm not sure, you know, what if, um, Dina, do you know what when that time frame would be? The other question is, um, the, how are they just we the homeowner has to run it to the sewer main, or will Fort Worth uh, tee off the sewer main and bring it to your property line? Then we tech tap into that. 
How's that? It it would be your responsibility from. Well, I understand it's my responsibility to have someone take it. Do I take it to the street? I mean, because you guys, when you do a water line, when you do a water line, you give so many feet off that off the water line, and then we hook up to that water line. So I was wondering if it's the same thing as the sewer. Or will my three or four inch hook into a whatever eight inch or 16 inch pipe going in? Yes, we would take we would take the service line to the property line and then anything okay. from the property line, it will be private. You have to, yeah. you have to right. the line I, from us. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. So now the sewer line, since we, we don't have them here on Oak Haven, where is that going to be placed at? Are they putting them in the middle of the street? Are they no. putting it under underneath the water or what? Okay, we 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 gonna actually the design now for the water and sewer. It's in the street. That's what it is. It's in the street. It's under under the pavement, yes, sir. Under the okay. pavement. Okay. Okay. So basically, our new road will be torn up again, and you guys put the pipe in. So, yes, unfortunately, yes. Okay, so. How about the water line? Is it going to stay in the same in the same area where it's at now? No, the water line is also going in the pavement. It kind of oh, it be... is. Hello. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. The the water will be in the street too. Okay. So, will you will you abandon? The cast iron, will you pull that out of the ground or will that just stay there? It, it will Hello? be abandoned. We're gonna remove the cast iron, we're gonna put a new piping in, and we're gonna reconstruct the street again. Right. When we turn up the street, we're gonna reconstruct it again. Okay, so, but the water pipe, since it's cast iron, are you guys gonna be pulling that out of the ground? Also, or are you going to leave it there? The cast iron pipes will be abandoned. Okay, okay. They'll be so. left where they are, actually. And so. they'll be ground. All right, so um, what was the, to get updates on this project, where do we go to do that? Okay. Yeah, let, let me go to that uh, page. There's a website page in here. I'm going to go to it in a minute, and I'll show you where it's at. Or you can go to the home page and go to www. Let me see which slide is that one in. Here you go. You go to www.fortworthtexas.gov. Right. And type in the project number one. Zero four zero two zero in the search box. Oh. Okay, that's one zero four zero two zero. Yes, this is the project number. When you go to the www.fortworthtexas.gov, there's a search right. bar up. You put the project number. That will take you to the home page of this project, and will give you information on the project. And the title would be Woodland Springs and Stedman Farms Water and Sewer Improvements Project Page. That's, that's the page for this project. Right, okay. Now, to get to the project update, you need to scroll down to the bottom of the page and the clip, you can click on subscribe to this page. This way you can get more information on it. If okay. you need to subscribe, okay? Okay, so yeah, all right. So now, are we going to have? Are you going to once you get the price, um, what it's going to cost the homeowner? Are you uh -huh. going to send that out to them in a mailing, or how is that going to to happen? We're talking about we we will have a pre-construction meeting, and the contractor. Okay. 
and we will have the price by then, and we can share that with you guys at the meeting. Okay. Oh, at the meeting. Okay. And you'll, yes. you'll, now, is it going to be a meeting that the public can attend, or are we going to do it on a phone and WebEx again, or No, or no. What? No, we're going to come in person, and we're going to talk to you face-to-face, -face, and we're going to have um, that type of meeting. It's not going to be WebEx. It's going to be face-to-face. Nice. We'll come okay. And we'll get a mail for that, a mail in, a flyer yes. for that? Yes. Okay. We said got this one. Okay. I think that's all I have. Okay, great. Is there, is there anybody else listening? Yeah, I have a question. This is, go ahead. This, uh, this is Joshua. I'm at 5560 Oakhaven. Um, it's an empty lot. Uh, I know you talked about people switching from sewer or from septic to sewer. Um, for I guess my situation is probably different from most. And if I need to table this to take it offline, we can. Um, but how is that going to work for for me uh, and and my situation as we're trying to build a house on the lot, trying to coordinate with the the timeline that you're making this happen? Uh, just because I know there's a finite window that I have to tap into this, like you said, or else you have to wait two years. I believe that's what I heard. So. From a cost perspective, I imagine um, we'll get that where we talk about this later, but from a timing perspective, how, how, will we have a, a solid timeline or it could fluctuate, I'm assuming, depending on weather and things like that and construction, but if you could give me some information on that, that'd be great. Okay, the first thing I wanna ask you, is your lot platted? Yes. Did you? Okay, um, and the second you wanna know, like, when the schedule of this project basically like yeah so so first question being uh, it's platted it, everything is it's a, I'm a couple doors down from uh, the gentleman who was just speaking so there's no issues there so is the cost the same for... i can say this is christina with water applications at least for the impact fees you're going to be looking at the same um, impact fee rate except you'll also have a water impact fee plus the sewer impact fee because um okay you don't have water service now uh and then so i'm uh, since they're replacing that line i guess you would have a water and sewer tap fee as well um not just the sewer tap fee <clears throat> okay and I know uh, you said the sewer impact fee is 161 for the water impact fee. Do you know what that is? And the water is 251 and 70 cents. And then the tap fee for water and the tap fee for sewer, we'll find out at the construction meeting? Correct. Okay. And then the, the project plan timeline, um, Dana, I think you said online, it shows this, now it says December. I know I received the original project plan that was a little bit different. So now it says December 2024. Is that correct? You know, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Hello. Can yes. you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Um, I know you mentioned something about the schedule. We had to redesign this project. Um, initially, we had the water line and the bar ditches. We move in that to the street, so it's the sewer. So that took us more time to do that. The next step is we have to take this project to utilities to clear utilities. And so that uh, time window is going to change. We also working with TPW on reconstructing the roadway since, you know, the condition of the roadway is in very excellent shape. So we have to kind of. Um, talk to TPW about when we can go to construction so we can reconstruct the streets again after we put the water and sewer lines in the street. Okay, so with, with that, when they're reconstructing the street, when you're on Oak Haven and Sam, I don't know if you can tell me what road that is and you turn left and you have that dip, are you guys gonna construct that properly this time? Because um, there, you can see 18 million cars have Bottom, bottomed out um, on that on that part of the road. Is that going to be fixed properly this time with the proper drainage, or is that going to be the same? I'm going to pass this question to the assistant director. He's been talking to TBW about this project because I, I know this is major issue the roadway, and he can answer this question for you. Tony Shalola would answer this question for you. So this is Tony Shalola, assistant director, capital, didn't we? 
we have tr we have reached out to TPW because we t we do not do drainage projects. We just do water and sewer. So when there's a storm drain issue involved on a project that we're working on, we coordinate with TPW to see if they want to participate to fix the drainage issue that exists because that is uh, that is not our forte. So Dina has reached out to them. We're waiting for an answer. We are aware of that low spot. And hopefully they'll agree to participate in the project to get that uh, storm drain issue resolved. As you know, with storm drain, sometimes you're gonna have to put in storm drain systems, which means adequate at fall, we need to start to take that storm runoff somewhere else. So we're still in the process of getting a response back from them to see how they're gonna do that. Also, as far as the sanitary, sanitary sewer goes, we're going to try to reach out to more residents because there's a whole lot of people who are currently who are currently on septic systems to try to see if they're going to join in and participate so we can make this a more viable project and just not have only six people connected because the more folks you have on the sewer system the better it is for us to get things flowing so we're going to be spending a whole lot of money on the sewer system and i think it's best we try and get more people so that might be some delays in trying to get more people to sign up, or at least we're going to reach out and say, hey, here's an opportunity to get sewer service once and for all, and you can abandon your septic system. So that's where things stand for now. But the drainage issue, yes, we are aware of it, and we've reached out to TPW and are waiting their response on that. And TPW, are they going to try and put in sidewalks as well, or is this going to be just probably, roads? Probably not. That I cannot answer on that one. No, if I was to guess, I would say probably not. But if you want to, you can reach out to TPW yourselves. Sally will provide a number where you all can reach out and maybe try and petition for sidewalks or drainage or whatever else you want as it relates to storm drain and or paving. But like Dina said, we will, we will, recon we will re reconstruct our paving once we finish to put it in the same shape that it was before. Okay. And Mr. Mr. Howell, that is that correct? That's your name. Correct. Joshua. Okay. This is Christina again with water applications. Um, I do want to make sure that you understand. Um, with um, right now, if you were to apply for a building permit, um, one of the reviewers on that building permit is water applications, and we wouldn't be able to approve an application for at least our review to move forward without there being sewer um, to the property. So I guess uh, um, my question is to you, when were you planning on um, having your permits submitted? It was going to be only, at, would it that be after the construction of water and sewer? Well, I'm trying to understand all that right now. That's part of what I'm trying to figure out with the city is okay. trying to figure out what, when the project is going to start and when we can figure out, you know, when I can start the, the build. And okay. it all that it, you know comes back to my question about timeline. So when I keep hearing uh, from this group that timeline is, you know, it, it, I got a project plan before and it said September of 24. Now the project plan shows December of 24, and I just heard that that could change again, uh, depending on people signing up to then attach to the sewer line. It sounds like we really don't have a clue, which makes me very concerned that you know my build's going to be pushing out to 2025. If it corrects me if I'm wrong, I mean, I, I hope I'm wrong. If I may interrupt again, you mentioned the drainage issue, so that would need to be looked into as well. As far as drainage goes, that takes a while to develop because that would be TPW's responsibility to go resolve that uh, drainage issue on the storm drain folks. Well, all that... I'm referring to, all I'm referring to is on Oak Leaf Trail and Oak Haven. There's a dip there that instead of adding an actual proper culvert pipe and making the road proper, you cut the road down and now everybody bottoms out when they drive through the road. That's what I'm referring to. I'm yeah, not I'm referring sorry. to any drainage issues else. Uh, drainage issues are, are not a problem for me for my property. I'm just asking about the road in that specific spot. If, if they added a proper culvert pipe, there would be no issue whatsoever. The people that live on the southwest or yeah, southwest side that called to have it dug out more would probably not have an issue either. So if you had a, added a proper culvert pipe, it would solve the issue. 
Yeah, we'd have to discuss. With that, TPW would have to be the one to provide the design for that because the culvert would have to be designed for a certain size to let water through. So we're talking to TPW on that. They would need to provide that design for that, plus pay for it. Okay. So going back to Christine to your question about when I want to apply for a permit, I want to do it as soon as possible, but I can't do that until I know what the project plan is and when this is actually going to get started. So I'd love to to have a maybe a, a further discussion with you and understand more about the process. I don't want to take everyone's time here about my specific situation, uh, but maybe if we could take it offline and have a, a proper discussion, that'd be great. Yes, I can. I can uh, work with you on the building permit question. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I've got a quick question. I'm one of the board members for Woodland Springs. Looking at North Taylor, West Taylor, Park Vista, and Katy, are you expecting those roads to close for construction as you put, replace the pipes? Um, actually, when we go to construction, the, the contractor will give us a schedule where he's going to start on which roadway. And normally we will close part of the road. We don't close the whole entire street. We will have access for traffic one lane. But we will know more about where, where which part, which street is going to start first. When we have a contractor on board, we'll go on the construction yeah, there, phases. There's not much room on North Taylor, Taylor, or Katy because those are old two lane county roads. They're right. not even city yet. So. So, but like Gina was saying, we are obligated to provide access to residents. So, whatever it takes to make sure you can access your property will be done during that time. We'll get a traffic control plan from the contractor, and all that will be determined, will be uh, uh, pointed out when we go to construction. We have a construction public meeting with residents. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Some more questions from our car, our call, our call in users. Um, this is Rusty. Full, this is Rusty Fuller from North Fort Worth Alliance. Okay. Uh, okay. For folks on that drainage issue, uh, it might be a good idea for you all to write a uh, an email to District Ten at FortWorthTexas.gov and explain that the situation and explain that this project is going on and ask for some assistance uh, in convincing TPW to uh, fix the drainage differently than it currently is. Yeah, we can so, do that. So um, that's district, district the, th 10 the thing is, is, I think the when they came in and redid the road, they actually tried to fix that. And um, they did actually, they went over there and paved it and everything. And then they came back and dug it out because someone was complaining about it. <laughs> so I don't know if it was the, because who did our road was precinct three Tarrant County that did right. the road. Yeah. And, um, they they actually kind of fixed it a little. It was better than what it is today, but mm -hmm. uh, they went back and dug it out. They did some other they did some other things because I I think what I was told is some of the um, neighbors were complaining about it. It wasn't draining fast enough. Yeah, the 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 the, the um, project because it was a. Uh, Work with working with the county precinct three, um, right, right? All that was was a what I would call a reconditioning of the road. They tore up the old road and put down a new right. road. Now, right. in, so that the county would not have tried to improve the drainage. But what I'm saying is, is that you might ask. Oh, oh. Might I, ask I know what you're saying. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, I know. I know where you're coming from on that one. So. Actually, to what you were addressing, as far as I know, it was a collaboration between the prison three and TPW, and TPW provided material, and county reconditioned the roadway, like exactly what you were saying. Yeah, what's what's real funny about this whole thing 
this whole road issue. What's really weird is I went to a District 7 meeting and I asked them about our road if it's ever going to get paved. And they actually told me, said, you know what, we don't have no money, so we can't even, we'll have to go out for a bond. And I mean, it was like seven months later, they're redoing my road. So I don't know if, if the hellstorm dropped dollar bills in Fort Worth's pocket or what, but they started doing our road and they told me we didn't have no money. <laughs> well, that... They didn't have they didn't have money to come in and rebuild. Uh, pardon me, redesign and rebuild the road. What they did was they were able to work a contract to just simply resurface the road. It's it's two different two different pots of money, and they probably looked at the fact that the road needed to be something needed to be done, and so right. they came up with the the agreement with the county, but. Again, you know, yeah. it's too bad. Yeah. It's too bad that we have to dig it up, but we have to. Yeah. I, well, I understand. I mean, you know, so. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, t the uh, transition on public works coordinates with the county on different things. So, but we don't know anything about those. So, Sally, um, th this is Rusty again. Um, is there a critical mass before this project takes off? In other words, if you don't have at least 15 residents along the, the Oak Haven and Kaler, you aren't going to do the project? Uh, the project, the project is going to go forward. It's just a question of when it's probably not going to be this year, right? Probably not probably most likely will be next year, but we would like to at least get more people to participate so we don't have a, a maybe a 1.52 million dollar sewer system with only five six people connected to it because that's just not good for our system but it is what it is the project's been initiated it will go forward but i can i, I can assure you it's not going to be this year probably going to be sometimes ne late next year maybe before we get to construction but we've got to iron out some kinks in there get utility clearance and get a whole bunch of couple of more things done like dina said okay um now for this, the fact that you're replacing the cast iron, um, there won't be any hookup charge for the folks, will there? That would the be correct. It would be, be correct. Actually, as a matter of fact, when that road was uh, repaved, the, the water main was not under pavement. So we gave the okay. We, we did not object. But if you all remember the uh, winter storm of 2021, that's when all our cast iron fold, our, our lines kind of became a problem. And then we were we got direction that let's make a cast iron program and start replacing those things. So that's why we're replacing cast iron on those lines. So that right. is correct. No, there'll be no charge for the water replacement. Uh, correct. So there won't be any, there won't be any charge for them to reconnect. None whatsoever. To reconnect. Thank you. Yes, sir. There shouldn't be. Uh, no, okay. but I just wanted to make, I wanted that clear. That is very, you are absolutely correct. My, my question is, is, I mean, the project's going to happen, even if you just have five people on, on board. Well, we don't we don't kill projects, so we're hoping we'll get more people to sign up. That's that's the right. best. Now, let let me ask you some. So, if you get more people to sign up, is it going to be less um, cost on the homeowners? To no. hook up to it, or no. is it just going to be the same? Same, sir. No, no difference. Okay, all right. Yeah, the only, the only, I mean, I, I see positive in this, but the only negative I see is that I understand that there is houses that are on the north side of Oak Haven that probably need the pumps, and I, I personally don't think it should be the homeowner's responsibility to take care of the pump. Um, on, on, on those, we are not going to be able to maintain those pumps. We'll install it at the city's cost, and the homeowner's just going to have to maintain it once once we're done. There'll be a two-year warranty once it's installed, and after that, 
the homeowner will be responsible for maintenance, but we'll we'll pay yeah. to put it. Uh, well, that, that's the thing is I don't believe I don't think those people there will tie into it because it's 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 a cost. I mean, right now it doesn't really cost us nothing for our, our septic tank. <laughs> but at some point, septic tanks do go bad, so it'll be a decision to be made. And it also helps that on some of this project, on some of the line, on the sewer line, there's locations where it's pretty deep. So if somebody decides in the future to come and connect to that line. There's going to be an expense that's going to be charged to recon to recon to recondition the roadway, and there'll be a type that'll be probably more expensive than what we're going to what you're going to be charged now. So, those are the things that people might want to uh, consider. That septic tanks do go bad, and when they do go right. bad, they either go out to replace it or dig it out. So, there's benefits to the sewer man, but people are not going to be mandated to connect. But I just want to remind everybody, if you all could pass the word along that. We've got some segments of the sewer line that are deep. And if you decide at the later date, only folks that pay for service will give them service. Anybody that don't pay, we are not going to extend service line out. So whenever they decide to uh, connect to it, they're going to have to go to uh, water applications, pay the fees, which would now in include pavement repair costs. And that can get pretty pricey. So just, just a word of caution. Right. Right. So. So when is the next meeting for timeline with construction? So again, it until we until we advertise the job, we are not going to know when construction is going to take place. So it will not be this year, like I said. We're just going to put some. I guess we'll go. You can check the timeline, or you all can reach out via email to Dina if you want to every other quarterly or something to so know exactly where we're going to be. But once we wrap up the design. If you all want to, we can have another virtual meeting. Once we design, design is wrapped up, we're sure that we're going to, we know about when we're going to go to construction. We're, we're, we're willing to have another virtual meeting to let you all know that this job is about to be advertised and get some better timelines in then. Would that work for everybody? Well, I personally think, I like, I, I personally like in-person meetings. <laughs> we're going to have one at pre-construction when we have a contractor on board. So right. I think if you if you want an in person, well, we can we can talk about that as well. But if you uh, want one more meeting before we have that, uh, what you might call it, pre construction meeting, we're 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 willing to do that as well. If that if that if that's what you would want. Right. So. So how how far down the road is the design meeting? Are we talking months? This is a design meeting we're having now. The next meeting will probably not be with, will probably not going to be till next year if we have another meeting prior to. Advertising the job for bid, but I don't know if you all reach out to your neighbors to try and I guess talk to some folks if more folks want to connect because, like I said, trying to connect in the future is going to be a little problematic because of some deep sewer depths that we have, and the cost to repair the pavement is not going to be cheap. So if you all can help us get some more people to join in on the sewer, that'd be very helpful as well. I went all up and down. Oak Haven and was told to stop there by the person who I was working with previously to Dana. So I did everything I could to get as many signatures on, on Oak Haven. I didn't realize at the time that this was extending beyond Oak Haven. So I didn't even consider walking to anyone's house to get them engaged. Yeah, if you wanted to, we could send you, if you, if you leave your, send your name and email to Sally, we can send you the drawings that show where the sewer line is going to be. And if you want to reach out that way, that would be helpful as well. I have all of it already. I've received everything from Esteban, um, okay. who provided the, the drawings of where the sewer lines are going, where the water lines are going, and the original project plan. And do, you now have, void. do you have something that shows the plan profile? I believe so, but I can, yeah, I can give okay. you uh, so my you email. That's fine. Yeah, Esteban, Dana, Dana, Esteban. Dana has my email, and Esteban has my email, so you're welcome to reach out to me whatever, with whatever you have, and I'll assist where I can. Uh, let me see. If Esteban, are you still on? Yes, sir. Did you send yeah, the plan can... profile that you have? I sent them the last uh, plan profile or whatever was in the plan right. that Dina sent okay. me. So you have everything then, so we're good. Okay. So as you can see on those drawings you saw, we do have some deep sections of sewer. So if you could help get more people to sign up, that'd be very helpful because in the future, like I, I, for, the, for the lack of repeating myself, it's going to cost more money then to connect. And only folks that pay we will only folks that pay will get a sewer a sewer stub out. 
Can you? I, I, the question is, can you pay for a sewer, a sewer sub out and not hook to the sewer yet? Uh, if you are, if you applied it, Christina, correct, you can do that. Excuse me. If what? Christine, Christine? Um, you can. I mean, we can work on them to pay the tap fee. Now the impact fee. That's something that. Um, that that would not be paid until they needed to connect. Well, that would be um, only we, people that applied it, right? Right, right, correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, and th and that's important because there are there are more there are actually properties on uh, Kaler, West Kaler Road that are not platted, um, versus this Oak Haven. It looks like um, this whole segment, at least section of the neighborhood, is platted. So if you all could even get the unplanted property owners to plant their property, that would even be more helpful as well. What, what is what you're what are you talking about? Platting. Uh, can you explain that please? So it's when that, that property has been legally recorded. Um it's gone through the city to have the property lines mapped and you know we easements are are um established and it's recorded with the county. Um, okay, and so, so it's not just a surveyed lot. Sometimes, you know, if you've seen a property description, if it says like survey and abstract, that is not right. a planted property. Okay, so the, you're saying that in this little division that we live in, some property aren't platted? Um, like the ones on, on Kaler, on West Kaler? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. But it looks like um, the ones on Oak Haven um, are platted, all of the lots there. Okay, so was that up to the homeowners or was that when Fort Worth came in and annexed, why didn't they plat them at that time? Uh, platting is up to the builder, the developer, anytime they uh, build a home. But I, I believe this area was annexed. Um, it was. It's, many it's years an annexed back, area. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm not sure what the requirements were then, but it's they're not platted. These homes were already established. Um, wow. At that time. Yeah, because while well, my house is basically, I'm on Oak Haven, and, and it's my house and my neighbor's house are the newest. One was built in '99, and the other one was built in 2000. So um, the other ones were built in the '70s. So, um, okay, wow, that's crazy. That so, but we can actually, if we wanted to, we can actually pay for the the service line, but we don't have to hook up to it yet. Yeah, we can tap it, if, but if you got to be got to right. be tapping. Right. So, but you would pay for what? What do you call it? The tap. Yes, the tap connection to the main. Okay. So. I go back in the slide. But what's the, how about the impact fees? Do they go up yearly? Um, well, with this, like at least for Oak Haven, I mean, you're an established, it's an, an already platted property. So the fee will remain the same unless you replat a property like to subdivide it or something like that. That impact fee should remain the same. Okay. All right. Christina, how, how did they determine, uh, how can an individual determine whether or not their property is platted? Um, they can reach out to the Tarrant County. Um, they can get the plat information there. Um, I do have a copy of the uh, plat for Oak Haven. Um, so, I mean, I can always forward that if, if it's for that area, um, but like, but like I said on Kaler, it's you know some lots are not platted. So I don't have that information. Can you tell from the zoning map? Um, you know it. it yes, if you go to like to one address on our website, usually it'll list the legal description on there, saying you know whatever the subdivision name is, lot and block. Um, but you can also go to your to Tarrant County TAD. TAD.org, look for your address and it'll show you what your legal description is. Um, and if it says abstract in a survey, then it's not platted. So there are a few places to, to verify. Rusty, I just put the link in the chat for one address. Thank you. 
kind of hard to see because it's dark. Okay. Can can folks see that? And and for those folks that are on on uh, on the telephone. No, but um, we'll include. Uh, I don't remember whether you were on the call from the first start of this. We do um, a YouTube video of this WebEx meeting, and that will post to the project page. We'll also um, do a PDF of the PowerPoint, and I'm trying to capture all of your questions, and so we might be able to do something extra than we that we do on our regular projects. So I'll make sure that um, I send this one address to your neighborhood associations if you can spread the news. Yeah, the people who are most effective are, in fact, not not in any of the associations. So okay. that's why okay. that's why. Um, I was trying to make sure that folks who are in that uh, square of Taylor, Katie, Oak Haven, Timberland, all that can can easily find out whether or not their property is platted. Well, sun, how about sunset? It's actually is it sunset or sun? That's that's the other uh, division that got. Uh, Annexed in, and they're on the, they're on the project too. Which section is that? Sunset Circle. Sunset Circle, yes. Okay. You're not including sun. You're not. Including Sunset Circle in in from what I can see in any of this. No, we're not. Well, I thought they were. I I don't see that. Uh, no, the, if you notice that, the, well, you can't see it because you're on the phone. But the, right. the the line's coming up. the The, the line is coming up along North Kaler Road, and then turns turns east onto West Kaler Road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's not it's not affecting the folks in Sunset Circle. Sunset oh, wow. Circle, they have PVC line. They don't have cast iron on that Sunset Circle. I thought maybe sewer. Yeah, I thought they were in the sewer project. No. They're not part of this project. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, that one surveyor that was in my in my neighborhood, he was over there surveying it. So I was just wondering. So basically, just the sewers, just uh, just the little Haven subdivision. Yeah, Sunset Circle is not part of the project. We stopped okay. right short on North Gala Road on this one. Yep. Uh, so you mentioned if more people sign up, it would help expedite the project. So what what is that number? I just, just we just wish for more people to sign up. Let's let's leave it at that. I mean, because the the reason why and these questions are going to come up when I start going to people's houses, if I tell them, yeah, in a year and a half or two years, you might get sewer lines. It's going to lose momentum. I'm just trying to help the project along with giving Great. some sort of feedback when when it's asked. So if you look at it on the north and south. Of uh, of uh, south of Timberland Road and on, on both sides of Grove Road, we got a whole bunch of folks that are planted that are currently on septic. So the more we can get, the better. Maybe you can just say majority. That'd be helpful. But again, like I said before, the more the more it'd be better because if those folks, when their septic tanks go bad, they're going to be reaching out to the city to want to connect, and it's going to cost a whole lot more. And probably model up the street because at that point in time, we'll be cutting individual pieces of, of the street to put in a sewer extension. So that that's very helpful on that. So if you say majority, that's fine, but the project will not die. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying because I again this this is whenever I got all the signatures before, people were asking, so when would this happen? And my, my response to them was, I don't know. And it sounds like my response is also gonna be Sometime in maybe 2024. So, I, I, again, if there's anything we can do to to have somewhat of a date in mind, it, it would also help people get encouraged and get excited about the project to want to be a part of it. We'd probably we'd probably be better able to answer that maybe early next year, 
if you if you're trying to get pin me down for a date, maybe next year will be better for that. But right now, I cannot give you a date. It'll be 2024. Okay. But as you can see, we're moving ahead with design. Things have been moving. Things are moving ahead. We're getting design done. So a lot of effort has been done, and more will be done to get this project to completion. But we just we would, need, we would like some help with getting people to sign on because we do this all the time all over the place on all this uh, when they, annex, sir. If we get more more people involved, what is the process? I mean, before I had a piece of paper and they signed it. So what do you want them to do now if they if they are encouraged and, and want to be a part of it? What should they do and, and how do we get them to you in order to say, yes, I want to be a part of it? I guess you can send a, you can have them send an email to Dana, send an email to Sally. So Sally, and, or Sally, Christina, and Dina, just shoot them all the email or, or just uh, whenever they send one, copy the other two or send it to all three, say yes, we, we, we'd be interested. So we can keep track of who's, who's signing up or not. Okay. Oh, who's, sorry, who's interested, not signing up, I'm sorry. And then like I mentioned, if, if you reach out to everybody else and everybody wants to have another design meeting, we'd be happy to host that as well. So that we can pass information to everybody as well. Sounds good. I I have a question. Um, is there any water guys on online? Yeah, we are the water guys. Uh, okay, so I mean, will Texas at one time like start getting written? Because I mean, you guys get do we get our water from ground or is it just from reservoirs everywhere? Most of our water comes from reservoirs. Okay, so we don't we don't pump out of wells then. As far as I know, we do not. Okay, so because I mean, you know, groundwater would be the the big issue on septic tanks, you know. Yeah, we don't. Um, we don't our water try doesn't get rid of them. Our water is from reservoirs mainly. Okay, so I'm new to Texas for three years now, but I mean, where I came from, septic tanks were going to be obsolete because of groundwater. They were contaminating it. Where did you move from, sir? The desert of California. Oh, you run out of water over there. <laughs> Very warm, 120 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to Texas, sir. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, I can see I don't know. I, I mean, I've talked to most of my neighbors and they're basically, you know, they're not for it. <laughs> so. I know we, we do this all the time. And our experience is once we vacate the premises, then people want to come and connect. Then the price right. goes up and then everybody starts to complaining, but everybody gets a chance to join in at one time. But yeah, we do this. We've been doing this for a while. So. Right. So. How can I get in contact with you to have some of the permitting discussions? Um, you can reach me directly at 817-392-8292. Or if you want to just give me your email, I can jot that down and send you an email. You can have my information. Perfect. Joshua.Howell03 at Gmail. At Gmail. Okay. And also, I appreciate your help. One more thing I forgot too, for people who sign who sign up afterwards, there's going to be a front foot charge for those people, and that's an additional expense. And Esteban can expand on that, but I believe there'll be a front foot charge for folks who sign up for sewer later on, because of the right. cost of expending to put the sewer line in, and they didn't want to join at that point in time. So, right, yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell some of them that you know you better get on board now because it's going to cost an arm and a leg to hook up to it when you need to. <laughs> Is there anybody on here who has a question and hasn't had a, had a chance to ask it yet? We've got about <laughs> 10 of you calling users. Uh, that wasn't a jab. <laughs> We've got about um, eight or 10 calling users. We want to make sure we don't miss anybody. I put Christina's uh, contact information in the chat if you are not a call in user and you can see it. Uh, we'll probably, um, what I'll probably end up doing is doing a kind of a fact sheet 
to go along with this that will not be ready before Monday, I don't think, but we'll put together a fact sheet and get that posted to the project page too. Thank you. Well, thanks for everybody's time. Thank you, appreciate yeah, the attendance, and we'll get back to you soon if we need to give you more information for Sally. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right, thank you. We appreciate it.